Good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, as promised, lots of pictures of bugs for your entertainment. So, uh, I'll give you a bit of background. Eurotank's been dealing with microbial contamination in retail fuel systems for about five years now. Um, previously, in the retail fuel industry, it was a, a rare occurrence. Um, since the in introduction of biodiesel, it's become quite frequent. And uh, <coughs> Effectively, all retail uh, fuel retailers are, are going to be affected. So I've put a notice on here. Please note that these pictures are all of the worst type of contamination you can find in each part of the fuel system. Uh, all fuel systems don't look like this, but these are the best pictures of each area. So this is a typical underground storage tank. Um, these here are the suction lines which feed the pumps. The important thing about this picture is that if you look here, uh, this area of the tank is clean. So where this picture is being taken from is where the, the fill pipe is. So if you're doing any sampling, it's very important that you don't sample directly underneath the fill pipe because the force of the deliveries will actually keep this area clean. So if you were sampling here, you would never pick up all of this stuff around here so where you take your samples from is very important you need to try and find the the lowest point in the tank where it's the most dirty to get an accurate reading of the level of contamination this is a GRP tank uh, this tank was actually pre biocided before it was emptied so what you can see here is that the biofilm was going up the tank walls and the biocide has killed it off and it's released from the walls and dropped down to the floor of the tank. So if you've got heavy contamination and you just biocide, all, the, all you do is you change the biofilm which is sticking to the tank to dead biofilm which is going to come up in the turbulence of the delivery. So you actually get more filter problems with biociding than if you don't biocide. And if you don't use enough biocide, you will kill off parts of the biofilm and also create more filter blockage. So it's very important if you've got high level contamination that you clean the tank. This is another uh, tank. Um, I'll put this picture in here because it, it demonstrates that the problem with uh, the distance between the suction point and the delivery point. This is the end of the tank, which is about six meters away from the fill point and the suction point. The fuel at this end of the tank does not turn over. So what you end up with is you end up with oxidized product, high water content, which is exactly what bugs like to uh, live in. So um, it's also very important that you um, risk assess your tanks. If your tanks have a fill point and a suction point, a long way away from the end of the tank and it's quite likely that you're going to get a build up at, at the end of the tank which eventually will come towards the, the suction point and you'll have a really big problem so you need to look at your boats and see where everything is ideally you want um, the system set up so that you're ensuring you get as much turnover of product as possible so it's sort of the fill at one end and the suction point at the other end this is the biofilm from a filter Basically, this stuff here is what's sticking to the tank. So this will populate all over the tank floor. Um, if there's sludge and rust, it'll actually stick quite well in there. So sometimes tanks that are cleaner um, and then get a biofilm can actually cause more problems because the biofilm can break off more easily. This is biofilm mixed with a bit of sludge removed from a filter where we're pulling the stuff out of the bottom of the tank. So in, in a, a retail storage tank, you can get hundreds of kilos of this stuff in there. One of the, one of the problems um, with biofilm is that it will grow on anything on the bottom of the tank. So if you, you've got a, a gauging system in your tank, which has got a water float, if the biofilm actually grows over the water float, um, it will hold it down on the bottom of the tank, even if you get a sudden influx of water. So it's important. Um, that you have access to the probes and you take them out regularly and clean and inspect the water floats and the fuel filters. And it's also good in, if you've got biofilm on your water float on your probe, then you know you've got bio, biofilm in the tank. 
This is um, a suction line from inside a tank. This is actually about four inches off the bottom of the tank and we've got biofilm growing here. So this supports the theory that um, these bugs are living off the water droplets in the fuel and not a free water layer in the bottom of the tank. So the more fuel that passes through here, the more water droplets the bugs have to live on. And this is quite, when we found this, we thought this is quite unusual because it's not the traditional water layer, bug layer. It shows that the bugs are mobile in the system. So this is actually the other end of that suction line. Um, this suction line, when it's working, is pumping through about 60 litres a minute. Uh, and what, what's happened is the bugs have migrated from the biofilm in the bottom of the tank. Um, and certain types, yeast and moulds, have fixed themselves in, in the nooks and crannies in the pipework and are growing, living off the water droplets coming up the pipe. So this is, the, this is the same pipe and you can see that you know, it's a considerable flow rate going through the, that line and it shows how robust they are and they can hang on there and, and live quite happily. So when we're talking about things that are difficult to clean, we've got access to this joint, but a lot of joints in boats and petrol stations and commercial facilities, uh, the joints are buried underground so it makes removing the biofilm very difficult. This is looking up the line, uh, if you notice in there, this is a plastic uh, suction line and because the fuel is being pulled from that direction, this area of the, the joint is actually sort of like a refuge for the bugs and they can grow there without being pulled up into the pump. So this would be the first line of defence before the pump, it's a, a witch's hat filter. It's in the system to protect the um, under pump valve which holds fuel in the line when the pump's not working. And uh, when we originally started looking at these problems it was assumed that any debris that we found on these filters was coming from the tank and that as the fuel was being delivered it was breaking up these pieces of biofilm and then they were floating up and being pulled up into the pump. And then after about a year we realised that the biofilm wasn't coming from the tank, it was actually growing on the filters. So this was quite a revelation at the time because we, we assumed that they needed a pool of water to grow. This is a, a pump filter, this is a 30 micron paper pump filter and what was unusual about that was that this is the outside of the filter here, which hardly had any biofilm on, and this is the inside of the filter. So fuel is being pulled this, in this direction, and the biofilm is actually growing with the flow of the fuel. This is a really bad one. So. And then there's other filters in the pump. One of the problems with bugs in biodiesel is that the more filters and surfaces you have in the system from the tank to the engine, the more places there are to develop biofilm. So in some ways you want to have less filters than more filters. So this is again, after this filter, then biofilm is developing on the filter after that. And one of the unusual things in the industry was that the pump engineers uh, doing the service on the pumps I'd uh, never seen this before, so when they were going to do pump service, they were taking out the primary filter or the first filter in the line, and they were seeing that it was dirty, and they were putting a new filter in and priming up the pump, and then um, it was still running slow, so they were assuming that debris from the line had actually been dragged up and blocking the filter. But in actual fact, all of the pump filters were blocked because the bugs could get through the filters and grow all the way through the pump. This is actually a, a, a meter unit in, in a pump. So this is where the fuel is measured as it's going through the dispenser. So it's really not the sort of place that you'd expect to find them. But they're doing exactly the same thing as they're doing in the tank. They're, they're growing on the walls. And, and inside here, there's probably more biofilm, which we can't see. So one of the problems with engines and fuel systems is that you really need to be able to get in and inspect and clean all parts of it because you could leave 
um, biofilm in a certain place which could cause slow pumping or even bring the problem back after you've cleaned the storage tank. So it's not just about cleaning the tank, you have to look at the whole system all the way through. This is another pump filter. This time the biofilm is growing on the outside of the, the filter. If you can imagine that the pump is trying to pull this biofilm through at a considerable speed. Um, so it, it's, it's tough stuff biofilm and it won't just, um, it won't just come off in pieces. So. These are nozzle filters. So this in the pump, this would be the third or fourth filter. So even though we've got three stages of filtration, we're still getting 60, 70, 100% blockage on the third or fourth filter. And, that, and that's the real, the, the key issue with the biodiesel is that it holds water droplets in suspension and bugs can grow much further down the system than before. Again, we've got some examples of, of um, biofilm and nozzle filters. Again, even two years ago we were just assuming that this was stuff that was getting through the previous filters and blocking the nozzle filters and then we started realizing that perhaps the bugs were growing on the filters themselves so the on, only water that these bugs would be coming into contact with is micro droplets in the fuel but if you can consider that this nozzle filter might be having 10, 20,000 litres of fuel going through it a month or a day um, actually sort of proves that the more fuel going through the system, the more likely you, you, you can be to get this problem. Traditionally, it was always thought that if the tank was stagnant and uh, it wasn't turning over, then the tank would be more at risk. But actually, what we found is tanks with really high throughput could be more susceptible because they have a, a much... Uh, a bigger supply of water droplets due to the throughput. Again, this is a, the nozzle filter. What's interesting about this, well, it's interesting to me, but maybe not to other people, but um, you would assume that the fuel is coming this way. Actually, the fuel is coming from underneath, and the other side of the nozzle filter is clear. So what's actually happening here is the bugs are coming through and the fuel system and attaching themselves onto this gauze and then over time they're growing on the nozzle filter. And this is what it looks like. This is a nozzle filter under a microscope. This is a filamentaceous bacteria which is, uh, this is 100 microns. So you can see that there's, there's live activity going on and um, <coughs> and they can, they can survive in the most uh, inhospitable of places with a very, very small amount of water. <laughs>